Hey everyone, welcome back. And in this video, let's just go ahead and explore a little bit about backend and DevOps because these two things are really interesting for some reason for my audience and people like to see content on backend. What is backend? How DevOps work? How backend and DevOps combine? So let's explore these ideas a little bit together in this video. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. This is free of cost and helps the channel grow. Now let's start a little bit with backend because that is, I feel in a way, a more strictly defined term. DevOps is also defined, but sometimes I feel it slips a lot into backend and cloud infrastructure deployment and managing that stuff. So we have backend on one place and we have DevOps in another place. Now let's understand what backend involves, right? So when you are a backend web developer, what you have to do is you have to code these servers over here. Now the server could be an EC2 instance, this server could be a Lambda, this could be anything. It does not matter to you as a backend developer for the most part. I mean, obviously it matters to you if you're building a stateful or a stateless application, then what to use, you know, caching with Redis and so on. But what I'm saying is the implementation details, how this would work, how this would provision in a way on a cloud or maybe on a shared hosting or anything, it doesn't matter. As a DevOps engineer, on the other hand, once you have an app application with you let's say this is an this is a node.js app which is written and you know that this is stateless so you can use something like and this is an api let's say api app like graphql so you know that this is stateless you know that this is something which does not require ec2 instances or anything to run so what you can do is you can use something like serverless framework and deploy it on AWS, AWS lambdas, right? So you use a serverless, when you use a serverless framework, you will have to write a YAML configuration file, right? A YAML file for telling the SLS utility or the cloud front utility, not cloud front, cloud formation utility on how to deploy your code onto the infrastructure. So basically what you're doing over here is infrastructure as code, where you write the infrastructure as code, where you want that, hey, I want to provision an AWS Lambda. The name of this Lambda should be this. The maximum memory it could take is 512 MBs, let's say, the maximum execution time, let's say, something and so on, right? So this part where you are managing the cloud, you can say in a way can come under DevOps part where you are deploying and managing the cloud. Plus you also, I mean the developer who has written the API, that's the job of a backend developer, but how or where this deployment happens is usually on a CI CD provider, right? So you might have GitHub Actions, for example, you might have, you know, Circle CI, there are basically unlimited CI CD tools out there. So you can choose any one of them as a DevOps engineer and run this deployment phase, this de deployment cycle on those continuous integration and deployment servers. Plus, you would have to integrate this with your version control system, let's say GitHub, where, you know, once you deploy on GitHub, the CI/CD build triggers. If this is successful, then run test. If not, then report in Slack or, you know, whatever your flow looks like. So you would have to configure this. Now, I do feel that a lot of this part actually comes inside the DevOps part. So you as a person, have the responsibility to manage stuff between developers and operations. This is development stuff. This mostly can be considered the cloud deployment part, the operations part, the handling, the infrastructure part. And of course, as a DevOps or as a DevOps slash cloud person, it's also your responsibility to make sure the infrastructure is scalable, it's hardened against, you know, services going down. For example, you are monitoring and logging stuff properly and you are able to communicate the way infrastructure works with the backend team as well so they write in most cases code which is compatible to the platforms where they are deployed because obviously you don't want someone to write a websocket api endpoint in a serverless app which is deployed on lambdas that doesn't make sense but it might make sense on their local systems so having that communication is very important within your teams right i would say the backend development is more of a role where you are actively writing code actively you know just just programming stuff working with the logic part, working with how to do it, how something has to happen, you know, working on more like a user front in a lot of ways, although we say it backend, but backend is the first layer to the front end. So it's, it's more like a user facing front only. And uh, yeah, I mean, databases and schemas and stuff like that. I mean, you can 
pretty much say that this is also a database engineer job, but a lot of times backend developers know how to work with this stuff also. So this stuff over here is the backend where you write code and stuff. And for the DevOps part, at least, you don't actively write, I mean, you do write code, but it's in the form of configuration files or interacting with the cloud or, you know, interacting within your CI CD provider. So this DevOps part does not involve you actively writing the logic and, you know, securing the backend, let's say, passing the user input so that it is not malicious, for example, running database queries or anything like that. Your work is more towards how, whatever the other people have done on the backend part, how can you now use the best tooling available in the market or you know self-host these tools if you want and then take it to production right the best practices the best tooling sometimes if you are also into cloud engineering i mean just a field i made up where you also work with the aws and stuff so you also work with the cloud part of stuff how the infrastructure should look like and so on so yep hopefully this gave you a lot more idea on what involves when you are working in a devops team let's say now the next question is can you be a devops engineer alongside a backend engineer and i mean just like anything the answer is of course yes i mean for me i did a lot of this stuff all by myself i still do i mean we don't have an explicit devops opening for code dam because i do it partially but we also have people who do backend know about aws and deploying and serverless and how things work right so it might be an overkill to just go you know super hard on full stack plus devops plus deployment so i'm not saying you to you know do this just saying that this is possible because i mean this is possible people do this all the time and especially people who are indie hackers for example you'll find a lot of them on twitter these people have to use all this deployment pipeline and everything now the reason the reason platforms like Vercel or netlify shine is that they abstract away this whole layer including the deployment including the ci cd part away from you so this is abstracted if you're using a cloud a non-cloud or you know i mean these players are also using AWS anyway under the hood. But these services uh, like Vercel or Netlify abstract away this DevOps layer from you so that you don't have to write all this configuration and manage stuff and deploy it on cloud providers and manage the CI CD pipelines and all that stuff. That's what that's what you pay for, right? You pay for this abstraction to these services. So I will have some interesting updates on DevOps learning path in CodeDAM very soon. Stay tuned with us. If you have not checked out the full stack learning path on CodeDAM, make sure you check out because we'll be making a few adjustments to the prices in the coming weeks. It's the best time to get started with the full stack developer learning path today if you want to become a full stack developer and today at this point if you just buy in the full stack learning path you'll get access to the devops learning path for free as well whenever it comes out so that's a bonus but anyway let me know what you think about this video in the comments below that is all for this one i'm gonna see you in the next video really soon if you're still watching this video make sure you comment down in the comment section i watched this video till the end also if you're not part of code dumps discord community you are missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code you already know the drill make sure you like the video subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and thank you so much for watching